In today's tutorial, we're going to be doing this dynamic effect where we create circles that eventually form some sort of an image. This can be done on any image. However, the result will be black and white. Apart from that, we're actually going to be doing two different effects. One being this using simulation nodes and the other one being this where we don't use simulation nodes at all. So without spending any more time, let's figure out how we can create the same in Blender. In our default scene, we're going to bring our cursor to the junction of these two windows, click and drag to create a new window and we're going to change it from the 3D viewport to the geometry node editor. Then we're going to press this plus button to create a new geometry node tree, select the group input and tap X to delete the default cube. Now the main idea is to get a bunch of points and have circles instanced on each of the points equal to a radius that we store for the points. We keep changing the radius every single frame and every certain number of frames we add in a new circle. Then each of those circles will convert into a mesh in such a way that the mesh resembles some image texture that we provide. So the first thing that we have to do is actually add in a point so we can search for a points node and plug the points node into the group output. Now since the first effect that we're going to do is the simulation nodes effect. We're going to search for a simulation zone and we're simply going to plug the points into the input of the simulation zone and take the output from the simulation zone and plug that into the group output. Next, every single frame will add in a new point and we'll change that after a while. But for now, for every frame, since we want to add in a new point, we want to search for a joint geometry node, plug that in here and take this points and plug that into the joint geometry. So now if we press the play, nothing seems to be happening, but actually there's a new point being created in the exact same place with the exact same radius every single frame. So the first change that we can make is actually changing the radius of this point every single frame. Since we want the points to be growing in radius, what we can do is search for a set point radius node, plug that in before the joint geometry after the simulation input and essentially use the old radius, which is stored in a radius node over here. And to this old radius, we're just going to add in some value. So we can search for a math node and then plug this radius into the first socket. And for the second socket, we can reduce it to something like 0.1 and plug this into the actual radius of the set point radius. Now if you play the animation, it seems like the point is growing because the radius is increasing. However, what you can't see is that behind this point, there are a bunch of smaller points that are being hidden and created every single frame. And each point has a radius slightly smaller than the larger point. So if we want to actually see that, what we can do is after the simulation output, we can search for an instance on points node. And after plugging that in for the instance, we can simply search for a curved circle. Now, if we plug this curved circle into the instance, we won't see any difference. And that's because the circle does not inherit the radius from the points on which it's being instanced. However, the information of the radius is still present within each of the points and we can access that by using the same radius node. So press shift D and just plug that into the scale and instantly you'll be able to see the circles. Now if you play the animation, every single frame, each circle is growing by 0.1 units and a new circle is being added in right at the center over here. But because a new circle is being added in every single frame, it seems like there's just new circles being added to the outer edges and you can't really tell the growth animation of every individual circle. To get that growth animation, what we need is a new circle to be added, not every frame, but every certain number of frames. So maybe we can go with every 10 frames or every five frames. For that, in the simulation zone, we need to play around with either only increasing the radius or increasing the radius and joining geometry, which is adding a new point by pressing this. So we have to switch between only this or this over here. To switch between two different geometries, we can search for a switch node and we can control which area comes in using this particular boolean socket. So we can plug this into the false and we can plug this into the true. Then the output of this switch node is going to go into the simulation output. Now for this switch, we need a boolean input. So let's figure out when we want to switch it to add in a new circle or a new point. We want to switch it if the frame number is equal to a multiple of 10. So let's do that very simply. We already have a scene time node which can give us the frame number from this socket over here and we want to check if the frame number is divisible by 10. If something is divisible by a number then when we divide it by that number the remainder has to be zero. Now we can get the remainder after division using a math node set to modulo. If you've checked previous tutorials on this channel you'd know exactly why we're doing modulo and it's pretty helpful to know all of these different nodes. So now we can plug this frame into the first socket and we have to change this from add to modulo and we can divide it by 10. So now this value is going to give the remainder after the frame number is divided by 10. Every time the frame number is a multiple of 10, this value should give us an output of zero. So we have to compare if it is zero so that we can do using a compare node and switching this from greater than to equal and changing this from float to integer. Now we can plug this into A and this is going to result as true whenever this value is equal to zero. So we can take this and plug this into the switch. So now every time the frame number is a multiple of 10, we are going to be adding in a new point. So let's actually see that in play by going back to frame zero 
playing the animation and now you can see how it's growing every single frame but every 10th frame a new point is added so you can actually tell how it's growing that's exactly what we wanted so that seems all right now if you want to change the resolution of the final image you can go ahead and reduce this particular add value by making it a smaller number so maybe you can go with 0.01 and if you go back to zero and play you can see the spacing between the different circles reduces making it far more high definition or making it have a greater resolution apart from that if you want more circles with this same speed at speed of growth you can reduce this modulo value as well by making it to something like five and that way the actual spacing will reduce even further but the actual growth or the speed of growth will remain the same so in like 180 frames or 185 frames it's reaching two units if you were to change this add value over here so let's say we make this 0.2 it's actually going to double the speed and you can see in 180 frames it's not going to stop at only two units but it's going to go all the way to four units so that's why if you have to control the speed of the animation play around with this value and if you want to control the resolution you can play around with this modulo value but remember the modulo value if you change it to something like one you won't exactly be able to tell the growth and you'll get this sort of an effect where there's just one point being added in every single time so again go with what suits your animation the best and play around with it for now i'm going with a modulo value of 10 and an add value of 0.01 so now that we have these points getting added in we need to actually convert these to real geometry because if we switch off overlays we can't currently see anything so for that we'll simply search for curve to mesh node and for the profile curve we can search for a curved circle if we plug this curve into the profile curve we see that the radius of these circles are way too large so for now we'll first start off by reducing the radius to 0.01 that we can actually see it better now there are a few things that have to be changed the first thing is that as the circles are scaled up the radius or radii are also scaled up which makes them fatter as they go towards the edge now that could be something that you want but i generally don't want that so to fix it you can search for a realize instances and plug that in just after the curve instance on points so now no matter how far they go the radius of each circle remains equal to the radius of this curve circle and they don't become fatter the next thing is the actual resolution if you take a look at this you see you can see each individual edge clearly and that just makes it look really jagged and also gives it a much lower resolution to fix that you could go ahead and increase the resolution for this curve circle make it something really high like 1000 and it'll become really nice and smooth but the issue with that is even for this small circle where we don't necessarily require a thousand points a thousand points are created which makes it a little laggier towards the end so to have this resolution be based on the size of the circle we can actually search for a resample curve node and if we plug it in before the realize instances we won't be able to control each circle to have a separate number of vertices so we have to actually plug it in after the realize instances so that each each curve gets control independent of the other curve. Now we see that every single point or every curve currently has 10 because the resample curve has a count of 10. We can change that by changing this from count to length and now every 0.1 meters one point will be created irrespective of the size of the circle. Every 0.1 meters there is one point. If we reduce this we make it nice and smooth for every single one of the curves that are there. So the outermost curve has a huge number of points whereas the innermost curve will have lesser number of points. Remember that this is going to be limited by the resolution on this curve circle if you had a lower curve resolution on this curve circle let's say maybe 10 no matter how low you make this length the maximum number of points that can be created is going to be 10 itself so make sure that this resolution is set to a fairly large number apart from that to also make this less intense on your laptop you can change this curve circle resolution down to the lowest number because that won't make too much of a difference in the effect that we're about to do using simulation for the trim curve nodes we can always increase the resolution later on now the next thing is we want to actually get this circle to change according to some image texture for that we have to first open up the image texture so let's search for an image texture and if you watched other tutorials on my channel such as this one you'd know the best way to set up an image for any scale or any size however we'll go through that fairly fast once again first we have to select the image by pressing this button and searching for it in our file browser once you've opened it you can search for a position node and you can plug that into the vector because we're going to be playing around with this to actually set positioning and the scale of the image but to actually see the image we can first start off with the effect which is we want the radius of these circles to change according to the image now we can't control the radius of this circle because the input is a circular dot which means it changes for the entire instance as a whole so to get control over the actual radius of this curved circle we can use a technique that we've used just over here which is by using a set curve radius instead of a point radius so we can search for a set curve radius plug that in before the curve to mesh and for the radius we can go ahead and use the color from the image texture now if you've set everything up properly you should be able to see some sort of changes happening to the radius which is exactly what we want however we cannot see the actual image yet but we can see that there's some sort of repeating pattern occurring 
which means we're on the right track. And also if the pattern is the image, it's not centralized. And that's where we're going to be using this position vector from. The easiest method that I've found to actually set the position of the material is using three vector math nodes. The first vector math node is going to be a multiply node, which is going to be set to the aspect ratio of the image. So if you're using a square image, you just keep it as one and one. If you're not using a square image, open the image in your file browser and find out the details of the image. So you can right click it and click on properties and under the properties, you'll see details and you should get this dimensions over here. Since we're using a square image, it's all right. We don't have to do anything, but suppose you're not. And let's say you're using this image. You can see the dimensions present over here. So right now it's 1920 into 1021. What you have to do is search for your calculator app and type in the numbers. So 1920 and then type divided by the other number 1021 press equal to. So we get a value of 1.88. So what we can do is remember 1.88 and let's actually open that image first and we can type in 1.88 over here to get the aspect ratio correctly. Now the resolution is a bit too small to see any changes yet. So let's increase the resolution as well. And now if you look at it, you see there is the image, but it's squashed even more. So that means we put the 1.88 on the wrong axis. So we change this back to one and we put it over here, 1.88. And now the image is the same rectangular image that it was supposed to be. However, there's way too many of them. So the first thing we can do is change this from repeat to clip. And now there will be only one image. Next, we want to actually get the image to be centralized about the origin. So for that, we search for our second vector math node by pressing shift D and changing this from multiply to add. Then we can just change the values on the X and Y till it becomes centralized. And in my case, it is 0.5. After that, we can use our third vector math node, which is going to be a scale so that we can actually scale up the image. So we press shift A, search for a vector math node, which this from add to scale. And if we reduce the scale, the image becomes larger. But accordingly, we have to change the add value as well to centralize it once again. If you don't want to change the add value after scaling it, you can plug the scale in before the add. And that way you won't have to change the add value as you scale the image up or down. So it goes multiply into the right aspect ratio, then scale it up or down according to the size that you want the image to be, and then use the add to make it centralized once again. And you can control this at any point of time in the animation. For now, since I don't want this image, I want the other image that I was using. I'll go ahead and open that up now. For this image, I have to use an aspect ratio of one. So I'm going to reduce this back to one. And now we have the right image. So now you can actually see the image being formed by a little bit, but I think I want a few more details to be added in. So after the image texture, I'm going to search for a map range node, plug that in. And remember the output of this image texture is going from zero to one. So we have to keep the from min to zero and from max to one itself. However, I don't want these areas to just get clipped off like this. I want them to have a very thin line. So I'm going to change the two min to maybe 0.2. And that way we get a thin line and the circles continue to grow instead of just getting clipped off in those regions. And the two max I can also increase so that this thickness becomes even fatter. So maybe I can change that to maybe 1.5 and that will just make the image a little more prominent. So those are a few things that you can play around with to get the desired effect to see your image. Now, another issue that I'm facing is this central circle I feel is way too large. So it seems there's just like a hole in the center of the image. So to change that, I can come back here to this initial points node and change this radius to something smaller. So let's make this also 0.01. And that way it's going to start off much smaller and you are not going to get that hole that you are seeing. And this is the essential animation. The last few things that you have to do is search for a set change smooth node as well as a set material node. And for the material, you can select the default material. Then you can select your light and go to the viewport shading of rendered so that you can see what you're doing and then press alt G to clear the location of the light and then just press G Z and drag it back a bit so that the image is clearly visible. Apart from that, I'll go to the world background and change this background all the way to black. And this is what we have. If I press control alt zero now, I can snap my camera to view, select the camera, go to the object properties over here and just change the location on the X and the Y to zero and play around with the Z until it's framed in fully. Make sure that the rotation on the X, Y and Z is also zero as well. So I think that seems fine. And that is the final animation that I would be creating. Of course, you can set all of your animation defaults by going to your output, changing the frame rate to 30 frames per second and frame 150 output folder wherever you want it to be, file format, FFmpeg video, encoding, I'm going to change the container to MPEG4 and the output quality as perceptually lossless. And with that, you can render out this particular animation or you can always mess around with this material by going to the material properties. And I'd like to just increase the base color to a complete white and increase the roughness as well all the way to one. But most of these won't make too much of a difference in this scenario. Now, the next effect that I wanted to do was doing the exact same thing without simulation nodes and having the curves actually grow out from the center. Before that, we'll just use the exact same node setup, but we'll make a few changes. The first change being delete the simulation zone because we don't need it. So select it and tap X. Therefore, we don't need any of this growth. So we can just select all of these four
four nodes, press X to delete them. And we also don't need these two nodes. So we can select them and press X and we don't need this joint geometry. So tap X. Now this points can go directly into the points and this can go into the instance on points. However, for the radius, we want them to grow based on the actual point that there is. So we'll increase the number of points to something like 100. And for the radius, we need it to increase based on which point it is. Now that is stored in an index node. And if we directly plug this into the radius, we will get 100 points where the first point's radius is zero, the second point's radius is one, the third point's radius is two, three, four, five, and so on. For now, let's just decrease the count to 20 because my laptop's also recording. So a little heavy on my laptop, but let's see what we can do. The next thing is we need to reduce the actual spacing between each of these circles. So to reduce spacing, we can search for a math node and change this from add to multiply and just multiply by a small value and that will reduce the actual separation between the circles. So let's go with a value of 0 0.05. Now, apart from that, I also don't want the first index to have a value of zero or a radius of zero. Although it's not seen, it's still just one circle wasted. So I'll just search for a math node, keep it on add itself and add a value of one. And that way we get 20 circles with the right radii as well. Once you're happy with this, everything remains the same, except just before the set curve radius, you can press shift A and search for a trim curve node. You can plug that in just before the set curve radius. And now if you see by changing the start value, you can get curve to get trimmed just like this. And this is essentially what we're going to be animating. However, we don't want it to be this sharp edge like this. So to play around with that, we can press shift A and search for a value node, which is what we're going to actually animate. And we're going to add in some random values to it. So we can search for a math node as well as a random value node. Now we'll just reorganize the nodes a little bit by shifting these lower so that we get more space to play around with these nodes over here. Now we take this value and we add it in with this random value. But remember, since the start goes from zero to one, we need to add in a very small number, not a large number like one. So we'll change this to maybe 0.1 itself. And now if we plug this into the start, we can play around with this value and we get this nice randomness present over here. Apart from that, we also want the end to have some randomness. So we duplicate this random value node and we just change the speed up by a little bit and plug this value into end. So now we can play around with this value to get the animation. However, I'm going to keep this random value max for the end at a fairly low number. So let's go with 0.02 itself. And essentially the animation is going to start from something like this, where I'll have the camera placed over here. If you want to check out how to animate the camera, let me know and I'll create another video on it. Or you can check out previous videos such as this one where I've gone about it in a little bit of detail. And then as we just decrease the value, the camera is going to rotate about the center to also follow along these curves. And essentially, once we reach a fairly low value, you can keyframe this max value to also go down to zero. And that will just straighten out these edges. And you can keyframe this max value to also go down to zero, which will straighten out these edges. And then by reducing the factor or the value all the way to zero, you get the full circle, which is when your camera comes into the top view. So control of that animation, again, let me know if you want it and I'll create a separate video on that. But until then, that was how you could animate the video. I really hope today's video turned out to be really useful and interesting to all of you even with the two different effects that uses and does not use simulation nodes. I release videos every single day, so if you like this one, I'm sure there are other videos on my channel that you'll also enjoy, especially a huge number of videos where we do different things to different images to get various effects. Until tomorrow's video comes out, thank you so much for watching, keep creating, and stay creative.